Sorry again for this. Uh, I discovered quite a bit. I feel stupid for not even checking the Pervert to Justice file before I made that video. Like I was going with my theories. Well, I guess my theories still apply. Like this was the most likely outcome, really. So about what I wanted to talk about. I started this video, this series, by saying that Lauren doesn't listen when people talk. Lauren. And again, it's very difficult to be able to listen. It took me a very long time to develop the skills for effective listening. It's an art and you have to work on it because most people are so absorbed by whatever they're doing or whatever the topic is or whatever, whatever the topic they want the topic to be. It's very hard to listen to somebody and they miss so many subtle cues. Like, let's listen to the extract again and try to listen to all the subtle audio cue that you might... Uh, that you might hear from it. Listen. <laughs> you gotta do me a favor, though. What's that? Just before you leave, you gotta pet Buddy for me. Alright. Do I have to? Yes. <laughs> you wanna see me? You want me to see anything? You wanna see? As soon as she starts talking about Bud, and she's basically telling him right here and there, this is a setup. And I'll tell you why after. As soon as she starts talking about Bud, Lauren goes into his pre-programmed bullshit of you want to see him. If he listened, he could have guessed this was a, a, a trap right here and there. Can you do it? No, do it just before we leave. Oh, okay. <coughs> you, you'll, you'll be able to do it tonight too. Huh? You'll be able to pet him tonight too. Yeah, I hope so. I hope you have enough gas. Okay. So if you listen carefully, she says, just before you leave, pet Bud really, really hard. And we'll listen to the second part. You'll understand what I mean better. I'd like that. Okay, I'll leave it on until I leave. Okay. Okay, I love you. I love you too. Just a bit earlier. Pet buddy. Don't forget to pet Buddy. Okay. So now listen very carefully what I'm going to say, okay? This is something that Lauren doesn't, if he stop to consider and think about what she said, and if he analyze what he said, it really makes no sense. Here's why. Lauren is going to Kayla's house, and the original plan is to take Kayla back to his place. And a bit earlier, he, he actually says in a phone call, uh, I w I'm not going to find it, but he does say in a phone call, uh, do you want me to bring Bud? But if I do bring Bud to your house... He cannot go to the bathroom because I guess, you know, of course, non Lauren doesn't want Kayla's parents to find the dog shit in their yard. That would kind of betray that there, there had been a dog uh, present at the house. But I guess Lauren is too uh, pathetic to just pick up the shit. That's quite a good point, actually. I don't think Lauren was the kind of guy to pick up after his dog. That's interesting to know. So that, that's actually a good point. Like, he says, I cannot bring Bud to your house because if I do bring him, he won't be able to go to the bathroom. And maybe you could just check him and pick the shit that he makes. And the parents, because he doesn't, he doesn't want Kayla's parents to find that shit. But maybe you could pick it up, Lauren. Like, that makes you think. And, you know, he probably did not pick after his dog. And that's kind of disgusting. I'm sorry. but So anyway, he says that. And the decoy kind of says... No, because I guess when you're conducting a sting operation, you don't really want a dog out of nowhere. That can mess things up pretty quick, and you don't know what can happen. Imagine if Lauren had come out of his truck with a dog. Now the dog's excited. He runs inside the house, and he, he smells some people up, and he climbs the stair, and he gets up. Now there's a dog upstairs with the, with the, the Dateline team. And then the police arrive, and they arrest Lauren, and the dog just jumps everywhere and barks. And now you have a situation on your hand. They really don't want that. They really don't want him to have a dog. And some dogs can be pretty nasty too. Maybe Lauren could have used Bud against uh, against Chris. Like I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Oh, I'm gonna cry, but Bud is going to hurt you. <laughs> so basically, when you make a sting operation, so many things can go wrong. And I know because I actually made a sting operation once. Not to catch predators, but I, I did a little bit of that stuff when I was younger. Not to catch predators, but sting stuff. When you do a sting operation, you never want some chaotic element. You want to control everything that you can control. So if you can say, don't bring a dog, you say it. 
the last thing you want it, is to have some dog trouble on your hand. So the decoy says, um, actually Lawrence ends up saying it's going to be fine. The decoy actually says in, the, in that phone call, maybe I can try finding it if you have some time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit back again. If I shave there, I Listen. can't even hear. That's here. And I'll be able to go to the bathroom. Can you get somebody to watch him? That's another hint. That's very important. Can you get somebody to watch him? This is so. Im I'm gonna. I'm gonna show you a bit earlier what happens. So you now said I don't have enough truck to buy enough gas to drive you back twice. Listen to his voice. Sick fuck. He has an accent. This is crazy. Yeah, I'm doing an hour away. And and. You want me to bring Bob? Can you get somebody to watch him? This is his first hint that there was something really wrong. Something really wrong with Kayla and everything. I'll tell you why. Let's listen to the extract. Mm -hmm. I, think you can, I think we get enough cash to make it back here. Okay. I'm going to put 20 more dollars in. Okay, just as long as you're sure he's going to be okay. I mean... Well, I'm sure I'm going to be okay. I'll be even better once in there. <laughs> How about you? Okay, so the big hint here is that basically the decoy is genuinely concerned about Bud and she's betraying herself. The decoys know that Lauren is going to spend the weekend in jail and she asks, can you get someone to, 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 to watch over him? And she knows very well, you know, Lauren is going to tell the guy, can you watch over my dog a couple hours? Because I want to go pick my girlfriend in Kentucky. But what's going to happen is that the guy would end up caught with the dog for the weekend, if you, if you understand what I mean. Like, he would, ha he would be forced to take care of Bud at least for the weekend. I, I guess, for root of justice, they don't care about the long term. Or maybe that will be the new family of Bud. But Lauren doesn't bite. And the decoy cannot really go and say, no, Lauren, you should really find someone to take care of him, believe me. I guess that she so shows some concern for the dog. She can show very little be without betraying herself. If she starts like, being too insistent, it becomes obvious that something's going to happen at the, at the house. Because to remind you a little bit, Lauren's plan was to go to Kayla's house and drive her back to his place. And then the way back, she could play with his penis and he, was, he would play with her vagina. And then they would come to his place and she could play with Bud for five minutes and then their clothes were coming up. That's the plan. So basically, one hour to go to the house, about 30 minutes maybe to talk with Kayla at the house and one hour to go back. So that's two hours and a half. It's not that long for a dog to be alone, you know? Like when Lauren goes to job, 9.30 to 5.30, I know, I know at the end he was bringing his dog with him. That was cool. That was cool because it was like a big yard, so he brought his dog. But before that, he was working as a, selling tickets and he worked night shift, evening shift. Lauren, Bud was alone for like eight hours at a time, you know? So the, the problem here with the decoy when she says that is that Lauren should realize that something not quite right. Why is she so concerned? Like, she's not overly concerned, but you can feel a little bit. Like, why does she want me to find someone to, to, to take care of Bud while I'm away? You know, I'm only going to be gone two hours and a half. That's nothing for a dog. I, I usually leave Bud alone for longer than that. If Lauren took the time to listen, that was his first cue that he was not going to have a good time at the house. Like, the decoy, tell him, get someone to watch over him. Yeah, but I'm only supposed to be gone for two hours and a half. Why would I get somebody to watch over him? Uh, she kind of plays it off with the gas. And he says, like, I hope I have enough gas to, uh, to make it back to my apartment. <laughs> like, so Lauren probably thinks, oh, uh, she's afraid that I'm going to run out of gas on the highway and Bud will stay alone for a long time. So I guess it kind of passes like that. Like maybe that's how Lauren believes it. But the second hint, the one about Bud and giving him a, a big hug before you leave, that one is obvious. 
Of course, the decoy is not really concerned about Lorne. Fuck Lorne. We don't care that he misses his dog. You know, we don't care. She cares about the dog. And the way she says that, give him a big hug. That's really for, 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 for Bob. And the way she says it, like giving a big hug before you leave, it's quite obvious. When you listen to it, if you listen very carefully, like if you're in the discussion and you just concentrate on what she says, it's quite obvious that you'll never see Bob again. No. What's that? Just before you leave, you got a pet buddy for me. All right. Do I have to? Yes. <laughs> you want to see me? Do you want to see me? Lauren doesn't listen to her. Why does she say that? Let's say you're talking with a girl you never met, and she says, just before you leave, you have to pet them. Why would she care about that? They're supposed to be back in two and a half hours. And she said something about, like, at the end, like, don't forget to pet Bud. It's pretty clear from that, the way she talks, that, you know, that's going to be the last time the master and the dog see each other. That's why, that's why she says that. And that's quite sad. But Lauren is so egocentric and, and really a narcissist, but he's not a typical narcissist. He's a, like a, a, a subcategory. He completely misses the cues. Because at this point, and I said that, I began by saying that the, you know, the perfect justice employees hate pedophiles, but they probably don't hate dog and they don't want the dog to suffer. They're, they're human, you know, you don't want the little dog to just Okay, bye, we'll never see each other again. And they know what they're doing. They know that their action, there's a good chance that Bud is not going to end up in quite a good situation. So there's a little bit of humanity when she says that about petting him. Like, the dog is probably never going to see his master again. And you know, that we tend to associate human feelings to animals. So maybe the decoy sees like, oh, the dog is going to be sad, but he's going to remember the last time he pet you know, his master petted him. And there's also the fact that the dog is going to end up at the pound, a difficult situation, and there's not much we can do about that. There's really not much perverted justice can do about that. I mean, they have to catch perverts, of course. They could maybe try to find a home for, for, for dog, for Baba. It's really not their job. It's, it's hard to do. So if you, are, if you study the conversation in details, just from those uh, three short extracts, like the fact also the third part when she rem reminds him at the end it's kind of obvious that she feels bad about the dog why would she feel bad about the dog if he's just coming here for two and a half hours she feels bad about the dog because it's a sting so it's a big hint when you take the time to really study what she says and i know that lauren he was having the call it's very hard to concentrate when you have to think about what you say it's not like you could record that and listen to it over and over again and i'm so grateful we can do that but when you analyze in detail, when you analyze in detail what happens, it's pretty obvious that, uh, that you know, nothing good was going to happen to her in the house. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. I hope you appreciate my study of Bud. And have a good night, everyone. Seriously.